Hey everybody, my name's Curtis and welcome to my garage gym. Today I'm doing a review and we are going to be looking in depth at the Bare Steel Iron Skull Power Bar. If this is your first time watching one of my videos, welcome to my channel. My channel focuses on garage gym equipment reviews as well as garage gym culture, home gym culture, and just general training notes. Additionally, this is not a sponsored review, however, there are affiliate links in the description box down below. Following those affiliate links helps me make purchases for the gym, thereby producing more content for you to watch. Additionally, link down below is my website where there are some write-ups for other reviews I've done and other training programs that I have offered. But focusing on today, I'm going over the Iron Skull Power Bar review. I'm gonna be going over the design specs, the construction quality, my training notes, we're gonna talk about price, and finally, my final opinions on this bar. Is it something that's worthwhile in your garage gym? But the first things first, let's talk about Bear Steel's claim specifications on this barbell. So the specifications are as follows. This is a power bar. It's 28 and a half millimeters in diameter, which is definitely a standard diameter for some power bars. Texas Power Bars, for instance, has a 28 and a half millimeter diameter. I will say that most other power bars outside of those two seem to have a 29 mil. However, I don't think it takes away from the advertised stiffness of this bar, which is also what makes it a power bar. It has a single power lifting neural, and we'll talk a little bit more about those because these are a little bit unique. Additionally, it has an advertised 200,000 PSI tensile strength, which I really have no way of testing. However, that number is right where it should be for or a power bar. It utilizes a bronze bushing design and has a rated weight capacity of 2,000 pounds. Additionally, it's available in three different color choices. You can have the black Cerakote like I have here. There's also a black zinc and there is a bare steel version. So those are kind of the advertised specifications. So really how is the quality of the construction when you bounce it up against the advertised specifications? Well, let's first break this down into its different parts. Let's first talk about the shaft of the barbell. Now the shaft of the barbell is 28 and a half millimeters on these unknurled portions. However, there is a slight taper up as a part of the knurling process, I'm sure. It just kind of increases the diameter just a little bit. On these knurled portions, it actually causes it to raise up to about 29 millimeters here, 28 and a half here. One of the things that I'm trying to do with my barbell reviews is I'm trying to actually kind of standardize how I capture the quality of a neural. One method that I found to do this is I take a cardstock and I cut a one centimeter by one centimeter hole out. And then what I do is I lay it over the barbell and I count how many mountains or how many volcanoes total and I lay it out so that it actually is at the base of one. So what is the total mountains per centimeter squared? And what I find with this barbell is it's the exact same as a rogue Ohio power bar at 20 mountains per centimeter square. Something that should be noted, however, is that these are volcano style knurlings. I believe they call them diamond style knurlings in the description. So realistically, you're getting a little bit more surface area and a little bit more points, but you got 20 20 mountains per, which is the exact same as the Rug Ohio Power Bar. This contrasts with a weightlifting bar that I have in my storage rack, which has about 30 points per centimeter squared. And then you're generally speaking like your, uh, your operator bar or your Rogue Ohio bars, also known as your hybrid barbells, they tend to have somewhere around the 24. What this tells you is that this has a uh, the ability to have a very aggressive neural and you don't need to have that many points to make up for the grip. Now when I describe the neural on this, what I'm going to say is that it is very deep and it is actually pretty sharp. The neural in the middle is the exact same neural as on the outside and it is five centimeters in width. Between the two collars, there is 51 and three quarters of an inch of space, which is really nice if you have a 49 inch wide rack. There are 32 inches from center to center and they were actually cut in in such a way that it actually drops down to about 28.2 millimeters and it should be noted for this. I actually really enjoy having this cut in and I'll talk about it later, but it is a very defined, but if you're not ready for it, it's a different way of doing that neural mark. Traditionally speaking, when your neural marks happen, they just kind of start the neural here and then they'll stop it at that first mark. For theirs, it seems like they took the neural, they started it here, they went all the way to the end where the sleeve was gonna be, and then they actually put it back on a lathe and cut those back in, and you can even see the, the remnants of some of the points on the actual shaft itself. 
Now on that, although you can see some of the points, it should be noted that the Cerakote finish is very well laid on there. There's no points that have more or less coating than others. It's very uniform in appearance. There are, however, some machining marks that you can see and they don't take away and you can't really feel them too much, but you can definitely see a few of them in the shaft itself. So that's the specifications for the shaft. Additionally, we have to talk about the sleeve. The sleeve total length from the end of the collar, or the beginning of the collar rather, to the end of the sleeve is 17 and a half inches. There's about two inches of collar space here, which is a huge advantage for those of you that maybe are a little bit nervous about hitting the uprights on your walkout. Having this be 51 and three quarter inches wide with a two inch gap there will make it so that you can easily clear your uprights as you walk in and out of the rack for a heavy squat. There's a total of about 15 and a half inches of loadable space, but that's taking it all the way to the edge and not having any collars on. Realistically, a collar is gonna reduce that to about 13 and a half inches. This is fairly common with power bars and is right in line with the Rogue Ohio power bar. The actual sleeves are not a smooth design. They are a rib design, and I would like to state that they are slightly deeper ribs than I'm traditionally used to seeing on barbells. For those of you that train and you have to be really quiet, this is something that I have noticed is that they are a little bit loud as you slide weights on and off of them. Uh, but the holding power of it is a lot greater when it comes to how well it actually holds the weights on there with a clamp. They are finished in a zinc coating and the zinc coating has been really durable so far. There's no oxidation, no buildup of any sort of material anywhere. I find personally that I do not treat my bars like they're like delicate objects. I tend to throw them around. I treat them, I guess I treat them like they owe me money. And this thing has done very well. You can definitely see where it's got, it's like battle scars, if you will. So like some paint rubbing off from the plates, but the actual bar itself doesn't have any damage from my use. Now, if we're talking about spin, it is a power bar. So I don't expect the spin to be really all that impressive and it spins, but nothing that I would be upset about. If I'm being perfectly honest though, if I have a bar that spins too easily and it's a power bar, that actually tends to annoy me a little bit because it's just unnecessary and uh, a power bar doesn't need to spin all that much. It just needs to spin enough. I've always taken and broken down these sleeves for you guys during these reviews. And one of the things that is different about this bar from most of the other bars that I have reviewed for you is that this, although it looks like it has a snap ring, it's actually not a snap ring. It's like a coiled spring. I find that the best way to get it out is just to kind of get a screwdriver in there and then you're able to kind of pull it out. If anybody's ever taken a keg apart before, it's very reminiscent of taking a keg apart. Now this right here, because I break down my sleeves and because I regularly maintain my barbells, this is one thing that I don't really like so much. I really would love to see a snap ring design get put into this. In fact, I'm actually going to measure these and I'm gonna buy a set of snap rings for this because snap rings are just easier, they're just as secure, and this is kind of a pain in the butt, and you'll see that when I go to put it back in. Now the sleeve is basically held on with that ring. When you pull the ring off, you're able to push and get this cap out. And this is the barbell end cap. And these are actually the original ones that Bear Steel sent with the barbell. However, they just released their new ones that actually state the Iron Skull Power Bar and its indicated weight of 45 pounds, again with that made in USA. And I'm gonna be putting these ones in. To remove the end cap, there's a little half moon. You pull that half moon out. And at this point, you are actually able to just pull the sleeve all the way off the bar. It should be noted there is a bronze bushing in this end as advertised. However, in this end, it is a steel uh, spacer, not really a bushing, so to speak. Again, it's not that important. This might be one area if they wanted to increase their spin a little bit, which is completely unnecessary, that they could put another bronze bushing. But bushings are expensive, and honestly, the bar performs just fine without two bronze bushings. As for the uh, actual shaft, quality of construction and such. There's a little bit of just general expected grime that's on the barbell, but there is no oxidation. There's nothing that worries me as far as like longevity of the bar. It's a very simple design as well, which is really nice because oftentimes with barbells, a simple design is just a better and longer lasting design. My habit though is if I take these things apart to inspect them, I just kind of give them a, a little bit of a wipe down with a very light coating of oil before I put them back together. Reassembly goes the exact opposite direction where we take, slide the sleeve back on with that steel spacer. 
slide it all the way through until you can see the notch where the half moon goes. Grab your half moon, drop it in on the top, make sure it doesn't fall off on you, and then just slide it forward just a little bit to hold it on. After that, take your end cap with the dish on the back side of it, center it on the bar, and slide the sleeve out. Now this is the part that I just, I really don't like. So take this little split ring and just kind of start working it in. Uh, it's really not all that bad, but like I stated before, I really just don't like it. I would prefer to have a snap ring there. I don't know if this is cheaper or why they choose to do this. Uh, it definitely doesn't take away from the functionality necessarily. However, snap rings are a lot easier than that. One other small tidbit is that there is about a one millimeter slot on the sleeve going back and forth. Now one millimeter is not very far and I suppose that if you really wanted to, you could try to shim that out. Uh, however, I don't think it's really worth it if I'm being honest. Additionally, a Rogue Ohio Power Bar, which again I keep talking about is because it's kind of one of the standard power bars out there, has about a half to three quarter millimeter of slop. And if you completely remove the slop, it's basically just not going to spin at all on you. So I've broken down the shaft construction, I've broken down the sleeves, even taken apart the sleeves and show you how it functions. Now I want to touch real quick on the overall barbell construction. It's 86 and 5 eighths of an inch long from end to end. That is right in line with the power bar should be, and it's wide enough to be able to clear the uprights while not being so wide that it doesn't fit onto a standard rack or a standard platform. In terms of stiffness, I can directly compare this to a Texas Power Bar, a Rogue Ohio Power Bar, as well as the Cerberus Power Bar, and in my opinion, it is right on line with where a power bar should be in terms of stiffness and is right about the same as those other three bars that I mentioned. I personally think that it has a very attractive finish. I find that the black coat with the zinc sleeves looks really good. It's a good color scheme. It matches my gym well. Now this is actually where I wanted to include a little fun fact. So when this bar actually showed up, it shipped directly from Solid Bar Fitness and Solid Bar had made a small error and included Elite FTS caps on this bar, which got me a little bit confused. So I reached out and basically what I found out was is that Bear Steel, at the time I didn't know this, but Bear Steel actually doesn't manufacture these bars. They are simply a reseller of the bars and the actual manufacturer, Solid Bar, makes the Iron Cowboy Bar, which this is the Iron Cowboy Bar. It just has their custom colorway. And the Iron Cowboy Bar is also available from Elite FTS. So if you are shopping for this bar or you were curious about how the Elite FTS bar was, this one is very, very similar and probably differs only in actual finish. Solid Bar Fitness is an American-owned company. They use American steel and American workers to produce solid barbells. So that wraps it up for construction quality. Now what I'd like to move on to is my actual training notes. I do a lot of strongman and powerlifting training. I've actually been on an off-cycle thing. I've been running a lot of juggernaut AI doing a power building program and I've been primarily using this bar for about two months now. As a power bar I really believe that this thing is up there with the best of them as far as how well it actually performs. If you're doing your squat bench and deadlift movements and that's all you're looking for this is an awesome value of the bar. I will say that one of the areas that this differs from other power bars that I've used which includes the Texas power bar, the Ohio power bar, and the Cerberus power bar is that this has a very sharp and very aggressive neural, at least compared to those three bars. At first it was really surprising um, how just how sharp it was, how aggressive it actually was. But after a short period of time, I actually grew to prefer it to the point where I actually used my Ohio power bar just the other day and found that I really thought it just didn't feel aggressive enough for my preference anymore. One of the areas that I really liked as far as the construction of the bar actually has to do with the neural marks and I referenced it earlier but basically where that neural mark is it's cut in down to 28.2 millimeters of a diameter so it's 29 out here and then 28.2 so when you're bringing your finger along there is a very good tactile feedback as far as where your finger is relative to the neural mark on the bar. That versus other ones where you kind of have to feel the beginning of it. And although you can still get that same tactile feel back, that deep groove right there, in my opinion, was something that I really started to look for and something that I really enjoyed. 
Now, as far as the aggressiveness of the Neural, I personally didn't have any issues with it. I wouldn't say that I have the world's most calloused hands. However, I could see an argument for someone that thinks that this is maybe just a little bit too aggressive. And if that's you, maybe you shouldn't really look at this bar as much. If you're familiar with the Agro line of Ohio Power Bars, I would compare this more to like an Agro 2. For stiffness, as I mentioned earlier, it operates as advertised. It's perfect, it's a great power bar. And I found that it works really well for overhead press, bench, deadlift, squat, rows, any sort of landmine movements. For all of those things, it's really good. The one place that I really don't think it works very well is for your Olympic style movements or for push presses. And the reason for that has everything to do with that center neural. Because of how aggressive it is, it tends to catch on your chest and it just kind of scratches up your chest a lot. Additionally, if you're used to the Olympic movements, you're going to want to have that whip built into the bar because it's very specific to that sport. This does not have that whip, thereby it's really not that good for doing Olympic movements like the clean and jerk or the snatch. Another thing that makes it not good for the Olympic movements is that extreme lack of bar spin, which can really start to impact you when you're lifting up a heavy load in the snatch or the clean and jerk. So that's my training notes altogether, and I gotta say this has become my daily driver as far as barbells go. So the next thing I want to tell you guys about is the price. Now out the door, this bar will run you about $305. If that number seems a little bit high to you, don't worry. There are two other options available. As I mentioned earlier, the Bear Steel, which runs at about $234, and then the Black Zinc Fall Summer in between those two numbers. Additionally, if you are active duty military or you are a veteran, you can actually get a very good military discount on this bar. But I say very good, I mean it's I was amazed at how much it actually drove the price of the barbell down. A big thank you to Bear Steel Equipment for offering that discount to the veterans and the active duty military out there that are trying to buy quality gym equipment for their homes. Now, if you're someone at home and you're like, well, I'm not active duty and I'm not a veteran, don't worry. If you use code KurtLocker in the checkout box, you'll get $10 off your order. And if you forget to do that, if you just use the link that's down below, it'll automatically apply that coupon code for you at checkout. The last thing I want to talk about about is my final opinion and that is that this bar is awesome this is my daily driver bar right now and I'm being really honest when I say this has been one of my favorite in my search and my quest for the greatest power bar that's out there in my opinion the $300 price tag is not really all that high it is a lot higher than some of the other options out there so like you have the bells of steel bare naked power bar which from what I've seen in reviews is a great power bar and that is something that's a little bit less expensive however it's also made a little bit narrower so it's difficult to walk out and it's just in bare steel but if you're looking for a Cerakote bar $305 out the door is a this is a really good way to go additionally what's nice about that is it supports American manufacturing and American distribution if that's something that you value then awesome this bar is right up there and it's a great value for you and you'll be doing something that supports something that you prioritize it definitely performs as advertised. It's a value for the price, and I truly enjoy the bar. But that's been it for this review. I appreciate each and every single one of you that watch every single week. And remember, when it comes to your garage gym and your power bars, you should always keep it better awesome. And of course, badass. I'll see you guys next time.